<clears throat> Hello, let's talk religion. So, there's been a lot of discussion lately about the shape of the Earth, and I think none of us have escaped the rise of the so-called flat earthers, that is, people who believe that, well, that the Earth is flat, and to, to many people this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, how can there be people real people in 2018 that believe that the earth is flat. The discussions we see on social media and in comment sections can get very heated and a lot of times there's more name calling and swearing than actual debate. But after all, aren't we supposed to support the idea of free speech? I mean, these people have all the right in the world to believe that the earth is flat. I mean, it isn't, but that's not the point. The real value lies in our ability to debate and discuss these things, and to present arguments and ideas to support our claims. I mean, there's a million videos on the internet about people arguing for a spherical Earth, so that's not really what I'm interested in doing. I mean, I could argue that the shadow of the Earth that's projected on the moon is obviously round, but I'm not a scientist, so I don't feel like that's my place to do so. What does concern me and touches on my area of study is our view of the historical aspects of this question, and indeed its connection to religion as well. There seems to be this common idea that we believe that the Earth was flat up until only a few hundred years ago. Uh, I remember learning in school that it was Columbus that discovered the Earth was round. I mean, that's... Do people believe? Is that a thing? Do people believe Columbus did that? In any case, in debates about this subject, this argument often comes up. The round earth theory is a result of post-enlightenment science, and thus in opposition also to religious beliefs. In other words, that religions believe the earth is flat, and science knows that it's round. Only problem is, this is wrong, and a grave misreading of history and the history of this subject. The idea of a spherical earth didn't just pop up a few hundred years ago. I mean, we've known that the earth is round for over 2,000 years. The ancient Greeks already figured this out in the 3rd century BC. In fact, Aristotle, who we all know and love, looked up at the stars and realized that the constellations of the stars changed depending on where you were on the ground, and thus concluded that the Earth must be round. A while later, Aristophanes actually attempted to calculate the circumference of the Earth, using different shadows in different parts of the world, and came up with results that are impressively close to the actual size. Even more impressive is perhaps the experiments made in the later Islamic world by Abu Rayhan al-Bayruni, a 10th century Persian polymath who also attempted to calculate the circumference of the Earth using an ingenious method including geometry and algebra. First, he found a mountain and measured its height. He then measured the angle of the horizon from the top of the mountain using a, a device known as an astrolabe. With this information, the height of the mountain and the angle of the horizon once on top of the mountain, he used trigonometry to figure out that these two are related to the radius of the Earth, and thus he could make a prediction about its size. The results he came up with are, amazingly, within an accuracy of less than 1%. In other words, not only was he and his contemporaries very much aware that the Earth was round in the 10th century, he actually figured out its size. Not only is this an amazing achievement, it also shows that the idea of the flat Earth as a dominant scientific position historically is very problematic. Another very telling example of this is from the Arabic philosophical tale Hay ibn Yaqsan by Ibn Tufayl, who we covered in a previous video. In the very first sections of the book, which is from the 12th century by the way, he writes this. It has been proven with scientific certainty that the sun is spherical, as is the earth, and that the sun is much bigger than the earth. Again, here we have a devout Muslim and scientist writing long before the Enlightenment, or Columbus, stating with such confidence that the spherical nature of the earth is indisputable and a scientific fact. I often wonder why people are so inclined to believe that the pre-enlightenment world believed that the earth was flat. Any reading of history, general history or the history of religions, will tell you that this is not the case. When it comes to religion, first of all, it's impossible to say that a religion believes this or that, but we have shown here that the concept of a spherical earth has not been a foreign concept at all for thinkers from different religious traditions like Islam or Christianity, but has often been accepted as scientific truth. Now, of course, I'm not saying that the scientific discoveries of the last few hundred years hasn't made it much more clearer what the actual answer to this question is, or that indeed everyone in the medieval world believed the Earth was round, of course not. Uh, during the time of Al-Bayruni or Ibn Tufayl, a lot of people did probably believe that the Earth was flat, and probably a lot more than today. What I am saying is that the history of the subject as it's taught in schools and so on is often very inaccurate and undermines the achievements of the medieval and, and also ancient worlds. 
But why are we given this view of history? Well, many argue that the Enlightenment wanted so badly to be viewed as this turning point in human history that it often exaggerated the unenlightened nature of the periods before. It was in a lot of ways a move away from religion and towards science, and thus religion was associated with unenlightened beliefs, and any positive aspects of religion was often also removed from it. I mean, we're still seeing the results of this today, as many don't realize how long we've actually known the shape of the Earth. So next time you argue with a flat earther, maybe point out that they're not just opposing NASA or some modern scientific corporation, but a 2,000 year old tradition. I'll see you next time.